we reject the doctrine called Calvinism. Calvinism, we believe it is a heresy where they teach that God ordained or elected people for salvation. Certain individuals to get saved. You'll find out that this doctrine is folly. There is much where you can find to debunk this. Now, here's something interesting as well. What you're going to find out what's interesting is that I'm not covering verses where I debunk and disprove Calvinism. Instead, I'm going through all the proof texts of Calvinism and simply explaining it away with scripture. That's all I'm doing. If you see me doing videos against Calvinism, you'd be shocked and surprised that free will is all over the Bible. And Calvinism is truly nonsense. So in th these videos, all I'm doing is giving the Calvinists the benefit of the doubt, giving them their side of the argument. And then we'll see how Scripture lines up with that. So let's start off with Galatians chapter 1. And we will read verse 15, Galatians chapter 1. And then we'll read verse 15. Notice what the Bible says here. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace. Ooh, that's a problem right there. So notice that the Apostle Paul, when he was born, God called him to salvation. That seems to be a problem. So God elected certain individuals to be saved. And we see that with Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15. That's their first proof text right here. Okay, then how are we going to debunk this? Well, let's compare some things right here. First of all, they got to read what the verse says. They automatically jump to a conclusion without looking every single word in the verse and then comparing with the context in Scripture with Scripture. Notice it says, separated from my mother's womb. See that? But when it pleased God, what pleased God? Who separated me from my mother's womb. It's not within my mother's womb. Now think about this, isn't it true that God separated Paul, and not just Paul, but me, and not just me, everybody today to live life and be born today, where he separated us from our mother's womb? Yes. So that is an obvious fact. We thank God. That's why we stress so much about, you better thank God for the breath, you, for the air you even breathe in. Amen. Because without that, without God, you wouldn't even be alive today. That's why you got to understand. Now, you'll notice that it never said God called Paul to salvation by grace before birth. You're going to find out that rather instead what God called Paul to salvation was after birth. And you're going to indeed see that when he believed in Christ for salvation as he saw him on the road to Damascus. So keep your hand here. Keep your hand here. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. Go to 1 Corinthians Chapter 15. Okay, so this is their problem. If they looked at the verse, you'll find out in verse 15, please God what? Separated me from my mother's womb, comma, separate idea, and called me by his grace. So notice right there that when he called him by his grace, it was not during the time when he was born. That's a separate incident, separate time. Okay, when did that happen? That happened when he saw him on the road to Damascus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. He was right there at the moment, Paul was saying. Like, he was right there. Let's also look at Acts chapter 9, verse 3. Acts chapter 9 and verse 3. So you'll notice that when God, when Paul was called by God's grace, this was what? Was this before birth or was this after birth, when you, what you saw so far? It's after, right? So in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8 through 10, you'll notice that Paul was still in his diapers when he saw Jesus Christ and got saved. No, it's when he was, what, 30-something more many years later. So this was not before birth. This was long after birth. They are, they, they're trying to argue here. This was done before birth. So he had no free choice and then uh, to get saved. That's not true. This is long after. Another thing is Acts chapter 9. 
and verse 3 through 7. Look at this. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So notice right here that Saul, that that's when he got called by God's grace. This was long after he got born. And we saw that as proof at verses, uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 3 through 7, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It wasn't the birth in his mother's womb. This was long after. Okay, we're also going to look at other passages. Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31. So this thing cancels, so these things cancel this one. Now we're going to look at another passage that Calvinists would love to use. It's called Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. Now, do you know that the amateur method of Calvinists, what they were going to do? Because think about it. Don't you think that the word ordain, elect, chose or chosen, you can find tons of verses on that if you were to search word that? Yeah, because it's a common word that you can find in the Bible. So that's pretty much a cheating method where you can prove Calvinism. They just look at every verse that says ordain, elect, or choose, or chosen, and then they'll use that to insert a Calvinist interpretation. But if they, they got to look, they got to realize this. When they look at ordain, chosen, elect, it's not all sharing one same idea. These Calvinists, they keep arguing eisegesis, eisegesis, context, context, context. And every one of those verses where they see chosen, elect, or ordained, by their context, they're all different. So these Calvinists, see, they're just doing amateur cherry picking. And these guys, what, they, what I don't like about them, which makes me upset, is that they try to act like scholars. And they act like pretentious scholars, and then they'll argue eisegesis, eisegesis, context, context, when these hypocrites, they just looked up the word ordained and chosen and ignored the context. They just assumed it all meant the same thing, saved. <laughs> all right, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 31. And then we'll read verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 31. And then we'll read verse 3. So here's another one. God elected a person that he would love before the beginning of the world. So that person got elected for salvation before the beginning of the world. That's the problem. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me. See that? Saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. So this man was eternally loved long before the beginning of the world. Now, the thing is this. The context is referring to God's love and election of a nation not a certain group of people. It's not individuals. Remember, Calvinists, they keep focusing on certain individuals where an individual has no free choice. No, you got to realize this election was concerning a nation. Let's look at verse 1 through 4. This is proven at verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, uh, let's see right here. Uh, I read Jeremiah 31, 3. Okay. At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of who? All the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee. Ah, there you go now. So it's not one person, pick and choose. This is a nation. Uh, let's look at verse 4. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. So notice right here that when God elects or chooses, it is referring to a nation. That's why it makes so much sense that a Jewish individual, in fact, this is shown, a Jewish individual is not considered to be loved and elected for salvation. But his, for his nation, his nationality, he's considered loved and elected. 
So let's look. Keep your hand here. Go to Romans 11. Let me explain. Go to Romans 11 and let me explain. Okay, if you look at Jeremiah 31 verse 1, it says all the families of Israel, right? Now, does that mean then, notice that this has to be referring to a national context. This is not referring to individual. Why? Because not every single Jew around the world is saved. That's pretty obvious. Now, if you're going to argue individuals no matter what, then you're going to have to argue Jeremiah 31 verse 1, every single Jew is saved. But that is obviously nonsense. So this is a national context. So the idea is this. God, no matter what, I don't care if you're a Jew who rejects Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter. Your nation, God's going to use no matter what to restore in the end times. No anti-Semite, no post-tribber, no conspiracy theorist, etc. is going to try to argue against that. So you got to realize this. That nation will be restored no matter what. But that doesn't mean for the individuals. The individuals out of their free choice, they can go to hell if they reject Jesus Christ for salvation. So let's look at Romans chapter 11. We'll read verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the who obtained it? The election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Well, look at that. There were certain Jews in there that did not receive it. They were not part of the election. Now, this is the supposed proof text where anti-Semites want to prove that we are the real nation of Israel because the nation of Israel rejected it. No, you're not still reading here, okay? You just want to stop at verse 7, and you don't want to read verse 26, 26 through 28. Verse 26, and so who shall be saved? All Israel shall be saved. So then this means right here, if we were to look at verse 7 and verse 26 and Jeremiah 31, this truly denounces the idea about individuals where God elected to get saved. Instead, the idea is it's going to be a collective nation while there are individuals in it who reject it. Ah, okay. Now let's keep reading here, okay? So let's read Romans chapter 11, verse 26. So all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn ungodliness away ungodliness from Jacob. See, that's a nation. Verse 27, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. See that? It's a nation. It's not an individual. It's going to be the nation. If the individual rejects Jesus Christ, don't worry, you're not going to get rid of the nation. The nation's still going to be there. So let's look at verse 28. As for concerning the gospel... They are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Now, this is quite a problem then in comparison to verse 7. Yeah. So it shows right here then that they are considered still beloved for whose sake? The fathers, their forefathers. This is national. So nationally, they're the elect, but there are individuals within it who don't want to be a part of it. That's why verse 7 points out that there are Jews in there who are not part of the election like we Christians today who got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in Jeremiah chapter 31, th this nation was elected where God's going to restore them one day. But God's not denouncing the fact that there are individuals within it who can be lost and go to hell. Now, the Calvinists, what they're going to argue is look at Jeremiah 31 verse 5. Jeremiah 31, verse 5. Now, we can argue that way, but then Calvinists don't like that. So what they're going to do is this. They're going to try to use verse 5 through 7. They're going to say God chooses a certain group of Jewish individuals, a group of Jewish individuals to get saved, and they are distinct from the nation. That's what Calvinists will argue. So what they're going to try to argue is this is not a national salvation. This still has to be an individual salvation. That's what they're going to argue. So let's look at verses 5 through 7. Romans chapter 11, verse 5 through 7. Even so, then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So there's this group of individuals here who are considered the election of grace. Verse 6, and if by grace and is it no more of works... 
otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. So, you're saved by grace, it's not by your works. Verse 7, what then? Israel hath not obtained that. See, the nation rejected it. But the election hath obtained it. The individuals received it. And the rest were blinded. So notice that in their mindset, the Calvinists are going to argue it has to be individual. It is not national. Because right here we see, verse 7, Israel, the nation, rejected it. But then verse, the second part of verse 7, there are individuals or a remnant within this election that received it. So, but here's the problem right here. Those verses prove our point that a Jewish individual is considered to be the elect saved by grace, not because he was particularly chosen by God, but rather he believed in Christ for salvation to begin with. Because if you look at verse 6 right here, you'll notice right here that they are saved by grace, not by works. And that is followed at Romans chapter 4. Look at that same wording, saved by grace, not by works. Look at that wording. It follows a condition of what you do. You still can't renounce free will here. So you notice right here, you still can't renounce free will. So they think they got away with it because they think that they can erase free will by pointing out individuals. But, aha, uh -huh, here's their problem. If they are going to find an individual to get saved, you know what they're going to have a problem with? They're going to have a problem denouncing free will right there. So whenever you find a nation, you're going to find out it has to do with God ordaining and electing. But then when you have to do with individuals, you're going to find out free will is involved right there. So let's look at Romans chapter 4 and verse 4. Now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace but of death. But to him that worketh not, but what? Believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. See, he believes, he follows a condition. His action, his faith is counted for righteousness. Let's also look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. So this is the idea, folks. In Romans chapter 11, verse 5 through 7, we saw that is their text. I'm going to write that verse later on. But then Romans chapter 4, verse 4 through 5, and then we saw verse 6 right here where it says, not by grace, uh, not by works, but by grace. That matches with this. Since it matches with this, you'll notice free will is involved. And then you'll see the same pattern at chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. Here's the idea. You ready for this? This is really good because if you get this doctrine, then you can debunk two wrong doctrines here. There's a wrong doctrine called replacement theology. What they teach is, is that the Jews, the nation of Israel, is no longer God's elect. We're the real nation of Israel. And they're going to use Romans 11... Uh, five through seven to prove that. And then you're going to have the Calvinists right here. The Calvinists, they may use this passage to prove that, well, you'll notice right here that we can't say this is a national election. It has to be an individual election. Why? Because of Romans chapter 11, verse five through seven. Ah, here's our problem now. Okay, the problem is this. If they kept reading, reading down, which we looked at before, what was it? Romans chapter 11, verse 26 through 28, right? Okay, this context we saw national, right? What was Romans 11, 5 through 7? That was individual. You ready for this? This is so eye-opening. There is an election that's national, but that doesn't mean every single individual gets saved. And there is an individual election right here. And that is done by their free choice. This supports what we argued before. We argue this. When you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, it is by your choice, your free will. If you want to be part of the elect of God, it's by your choice. Concerning about a national election, though, sorry, you're not part of it. 
So use your head now. So that means this. I'm a Korean. If I want to get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's by my free will that I become his elect. Does that mean my Korean nation, though, is the elect? No. You know who God's nation is as he is elect? Israel. That debunks two wrong doctrines, Calvinism and replacement theology. That makes sense. Okay, they, they don't read. But this is, this is even more proven. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 1 through 3. Okay, let's first prove free will here. Okay, let's continue on this pattern. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is, they, is that they might be saved. See, Paul has a burden for his Jewish people. But look at this. He realizes when it's concerning these individual Jews, he realizes this, verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and look at this, see, active, free choice, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. See, God's power was not that powerful enough to make them submit to him to get saved. He wasn't a Calvinist where he forced them to get saved. Look at that right there. So you'll notice right here, this is all free choice. Now, looking back at Romans 11 then, it makes sense. Let's, shall we read it one more time? That way this can make sense. Romans chapter 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. Again, this is a national context. We get that. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. See, national. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. See that? Nationally, he does that. Now look at this. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Remember the salvation gospel? There are Jews who are enemies. Why? Because this is all done by free choice. There's your one right there. But look at this second one. Does this erase national election? No, it doesn't. Because keep reading. But as touching the what? Election, they are beloved for whose sakes? The Father's sake. See, nation. There's, the problem is this. They don't look at right here. There's a national context and there's a salvation, individual salvation context right here. So you got to understand this. I'm going to give two examples. So I'm going to finalize everything by saying this, okay? I think I've proven my point many times, but I'm going to give two more examples. That way it can make more sense, this distinction with national election and an individual who gets saved by his free choice, all right? Let me try one more time again. I'm going to repeat the Korean example. That way it can really click. I got saved by my free choice in the Lord Jesus Christ, thus I became his elect. Does that mean my nation is part of the elect? No, my nation is not because God did not ordain them. God did not ordain them to be his elect. Now, let's say that I'm a Jew and I'm a lost Jew. Okay, I'm not saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. Individually, by my free choice, am I saved as God's elect? No, but is my nation ordained to be his elect? Yes, because you can be a Jew who rejects Jesus Christ and go to hell for your sin, but your nation will still exist. God's going to use his nation to plant his kingdom at the end times. His nation will exist. See? So there's a se separate distinction here where you got to understand with the national election and then an individual salvation done by free choice.